Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle where I talk about electronic music both new and old. And today I am going to be talking about the full-length debut album from Air. Moon Safari. So, this is going to be another one of those episodes. Moon Safari is one of those albums where I feel like almost nothing needs to be said. The album is considered a classic by so many, and while it's not like this album came from one of the most influential names of all time, spoilers, it's not one that I do not feel particularly special in that I also think it's a classic. And on top of that, I feel like I don't really need to explain why, because it is so widely acclaimed and everyone knows why already. But hey, I started this channel knowing that I wanted to explain to people why I love albums that everybody else loves too, and there is still the possibility that not everybody watching has already heard this, so let's just get right into it, huh? Well, I do love this album, let me tell you, but I don't just love it, I've accepted it as a part of my life. I already mentioned that Air are one of the bands that got me into electronic music in the first place. I've been listening to these guys for about 10 years now? And this album, in particular, I think got, I got for Christmas when I was still in grade school. I've listened to it so many times over the years that, listening to it now, I don't actually get anything new out of it. But I still wholeheartedly enjoy the experience in just the same way every time. There are very few albums out there that have achieved this status. And on top of that, I weirdly have never seen a single person dislike this album. Not one. I'm sure there's someone out there who doesn't like this kind of cheesy French music -y, uh, easy listening, but most people I've seen say it's one of the best easy listening recordings ever. I guess that is the tipping point then. This is an extremely accessible and easy to get into album. Most of what this album has to offer can be found with like one or two listens, and the album isn't even that long either, only like 45 minutes. It is not a super complex or even remotely challenging listen at all. It's just simple mood music. Simple, but very effective. That being said, while it's not exactly a deep lesson, it is one that offers quite a lot to discuss, all things considered. Let's go down track by track, shall we? It opens up with La Femme d'Argent, and this track would have fit right in with the lineup on Premier Symptomes. Heck, at seven minutes long, it's even more well fleshed out than any song on there. The ingredients are all there. Catchy, intriguing bass line, jazzy electric piano melodies, various electronic effects flying all over the place, and even some subtle orchestral sounds, with a piano interlude in the middle to top it all off. But after this masterpiece of a track, we're hit with Sexy Boy. This song admittedly kind of suffers from the same problem as Breaks On from Premier Symptomes, in that it totally kills the mood that the opener set. But unlike that song, Sexy Boy at least feels like it came from the same universe. It's much more intense and brash, especially during the chorus. But yet at the same time, well first of all it's comprised of all the same sounds of as all the other songs on Moon Safari. But it also has an odd warmness to it, especially during the verses that I can't help but smile at. While I'm not always in the mood for it, I can't deny that I enjoy the song quite a lot regardless. I considered taking French in middle school just so that I could understand the, the, what the lyrics to this song meant. Although, looking some of them up, I don't think they actually mean anything to be honest. <laughs> Then there's All I Need, which, as I hinted at in the previous review, is actually the return of the Les Professionnels outro remix, and with extra sprinkles added on top, such as these cool little flute sounds here and there, a weird synth effect near the back end, and of course the vocals of Beth Hirsch, making the song just that much catchier. Speaking of catchy, next is the infectious Kelly Watch the Stars. It starts out sounding like it could become another Premier Symptomes track at the beginning with the subtle electric pianos and floaty string sounds. <laughs> <laughs> 
do, 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 do. But then abruptly turns into an uplifting electro pop track with vocoders all over the place. This great piano learning in the middle, and even what sounds like a theremin at one point for that extra spacey flavor. I said I have to be in the right mood to fully enjoy Sexy Boy, but Kelly Watch the Stars has no such requirement. In fact, more often than not, it automatically brightens my mood. The next song, though, Talisman, is not quite as much of a mood booster. It starts out pretty mysterious and suspenseful at first, not too far mood-wise from, say, modular mix. But halfway into the song, an orchestra suddenly comes in and brings in a ton of extra emotion and warmth to the song that it didn't have previously. Oh, and I should mention, this song is a total earworm as well, possibly even the catchiest on the album. Do -do 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 -do. Next is Remember, which sounds simple at first, with some deep vocoders on top of a beat sample from the Beach Boys. But suddenly the orchestra comes right back in and creates this almost euphoric rush, turning from romantic to dissonant as more vocoders come in. Then the whole thing starts over, even adding in some guitars in near the end. That orchestra, I gotta say, packs a ton of emotion into such a small space that you are certain to remember. And see, see what I did there. You Make It Easy is another catchy track with Beth Hirsch singing, but this track has much moodier and subtle feeling to it. And once again, the little orchestral interlude near the end certainly doesn't hurt. Say Matinla starts out with these weird flute noises but actually seems to be all about nostalgic vibes, with lots of guitars and, yes, an orchestra again. Truly, though, the orchestral sections of this album make for highly memorable and emotionally potent moments every time they appear. But more notably on this track is the return of our friend Patrick Woodcock on the trombone, playing another typically catchy melody. <laughs> The overall atmosphere sounds like something you'd hear in the flashback scene of a movie where a character is reminiscing about a better time. Then we get new star in the sky, Chanson Pour Solal, which as you might guess has a much sadder atmosphere to it. Surprisingly enough, the orchestra never shows up on this one, so the emotion is expressed in more subtle ways such as an acoustic guitar and a harmonica in the intro, a piano interlude in the middle, and of course, plenty of vocoders. You wouldn't expect vocoders to sound emotional, but hey, they pull it off on Les Soleil as Pre de Moi, so... and they pull it off every time here, too. The end of the song does appear more hopeful, though, and also fades out to the sounds of a crowd of school kids. While I do like this song a lot, it doesn't really hit me in the gut in the same way the last couple of tracks did. Just kind of melancholy moping rather than like electronic crying. But we finish off in a somewhat odd fashion in Le Voyage de Penelope, which uh, brings us to a more suspenseful and tense atmosphere again weird way to finish off, but this is a great song regardless. Starting off with really subtle and spooky electronic noise at the beginning, with a piano and synth fading in. And then slowly and continuously building up onto itself in one big crescendo, getting pretty darn intense and dramatic near the end. But still ending on one major chord that just echoes off into the distance. And that is where Moon Safari comes to a close. I have to say, even after all these years, it's no less potent today than it was back then. I think it should go without saying that in the end, Moon Safari is an absolute must-listen. It's regarded as one of the best for good reason. Everything about this album just works really well. Nearly every mood is potent. The calming parts are very calming, the emotional parts are very emotional, and everything just has a very cinematic bend to it that makes it very easy to get wrapped up in the album's atmosphere. Sure, by now I'm not really capable of getting any new surprises out of it, but I have to say, I'm impressed at just how well it holds up to this day. 
even listening with my brain turned on, while I guess some tracks might work better if I put them in a different order. I don't really have any legit criticisms towards any of these songs individually. While I can't guarantee it'll sweep you off your feet if you haven't checked it out yourself, if you're looking for a good chill-out album that gets you in the feels and doesn't require a lot of thinking, definitely check this out. Overall feeling, uh... 9.5 out of 10. Favorite tracks, La Femme d'Argent, Kelly Watch the Stars, Talisman, Remember, Say Matinola, Le Voyage de Penelope, Least Favorite Track, New Star in the Sky. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there, and if you actually don't like this album, please tell me why, because I've never heard the other side of the argument before. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.